right, here is the video review for Iron Factory's Tyrant. Um, Tyrant King, where is he? Void Tyrant, there we go. Uh, their version of Galvatron. And he is a space cannon. A, it passes as kind of a cannon emplacement. Kind of, it, it's constantly angled up, and just the way, even though like, if you if you look at the actual line of it, like the basic body is fairly straight, but because of the the angle of some of the pieces up here, it almost kind of looks like it's cracked a little bit in the middle. Now you can, he's got his little uh, rear tread piece here, and as well as the front treads, which are on ball joints. So there's got some movement in there. Now this pegs on to the legs. Now uh, if you pull this off, you can see there's a couple tabs here uh, on these shins that peg into this piece. And you can use that, and when you use it like that, that's when you get this kind of interesting cannon. Um, you can, if you want, because of that ball joint, you can, you can lower this down and angle these, and it doesn't, doesn't massively change it. And you can, you know, th this can be put at a different angle. The feet really don't do a whole lot more than, and you can fold these ankles down, but, uh, the feet themselves, and you can kind of push the feet in if you don't want them to be quite as big of an eyesore, but they do just kind of hang out there on the back. But, um, but if you angle that, you can make that support the cannon at more of a slightly, at whatever angle you want, because these legs are pegged together up here, and, and then the arms peg into them, so they're fairly solid. They're not going to go anywhere if you unpeg this, and it just gives you a little bit more options on how to support that cannon versus leaving it sitting like that. It's a little bit more adjustable and a little bit more fun. But like I said, it's it's kind of a, it's a cannon because we say so. I do like the, the hip guards as like deflector shields here on either side of it, but from the top, again, it looks like like Triangle Head Man or Pyramid Head Man or whatever that guy's name is. Like just a robot scrunched up with a big orange cone sticking out of his head. But the attempt was made. And considering Gan Galvin's, can Galvin's Canatron mode, Galvatron's Cannon mode uh, was kind of a, it's a cannon because we say so anyway, although a little bit more coherent. Um, it's not bad. I mean, it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not the worst it could be. It, it, it's an okay... If you think of it as a cannon emplacement versus an actual mobile cannon, it works a little better. Like if this was mounted on the side of a ship, maybe. <sighs> He's a fun toy. The cannon mode's a little lacking. The transformation is, uh, again... A little more involved than you would think. Just it looks. This looks like you just kind of extend the legs, stand them up, pop the cannon, and you're done. And it's a little bit more involved than that. Um, but the cannon does. It's these little tabs right here slot into these slots, and this little tab tabs in right here uh, to the back of the head when you put that on. But you can pop that off, fold this up, fold that down like that, and then you can flip out this tab here, and there's his arm cannon. This does come off. I don't know why. Probably just because that's how they molded it. Anyway, unpeg the arms. The, I mean, right here on the forearm, there's a little peg on the side of the leg piece here. So unpeg the arms and rotate the, uh, the whole side of the torso up onto the body. Like that. You can rotate the arms around. Although, we're going to get them out of the way here. These stay down. Fold this piece down like that. Untab that if you left it pegged in. And then rotate the whole assembly at the waist. And then unpeg the legs from each other. Like that. And this tab goes into here. And then you just kind of extend the legs in much the same way that a lot of Combiner Wars and Power of the Primes figures did. And rotate them. So uh, you, you know which one's the front because it has a little red dot on it. But rotate them around. And then these panels right here actually lift up on this. There's a double hinge here. Well, okay, see, I just unclipped it from there. But... Lift it up, and it folds around the leg. And then make sure this is up, because it's going to peg into the behind the knee here. If you can hold on to it. But bring this around. And it actually comes around and fills in the leg, which is nice, because now you've got a full, solid leg. There's no hollowness on the back of the leg here when that folds around. Same on this side. There we go. See if we can't wiggle it out without popping it off. Bring the left foot forward. Fold that up. Then fold those down to the side. Stand the torso up. He does have an ab crunch there for posability. 
Uh, bring the arms down, bring this up. Bring this whole assembly here, this uh, black armature. Lift the head up, rotate this, this whole piece that the head's on around. You can see there's a ball joint right there. Rotate that around and lift this up so it's straight along the back like that. And then, but before you do that, make sure you fold this down because there's a peg here, a tab here on the front that slots in right here behind the collar. So fold that down, make sure that slots in behind the collar. And then just kind of push that up into place. And then this has a little tab that locks it up there. This is on a little hinge. You can fold that down if you want, although I think it's gonna stick up behind his head regardless. And I think, I think it looks better folded up to give that detail of the kind of spiky things there, but you can do whatever you want. And if you don't want it visible at all, you can kind of fold it down behind him, but then he's just got a tail. So it's up to you. That's kind of, you can rotate these around if you want. I don't think there's any real point to it. Just leave those behind there. There's his head. And then you can take the cannon and peg it into his arm here. And there is Void Tyrant in robot mode. And he's just as poseable as other Iron Factory figures. He's got the ball joint there at the head. He's got ball joints at the shoulders. Uh, the pauldrons move on their own. He's got a bicep swivel. Uh, he's got dual hinged elbows. I just popped his hand off because they're replaceable. We'll see that in a minute. Um, but yeah, all, all the range of motion there. He's got waist swivel. He's got an ab crunch. He's got side to side hips, thigh swivel, ball, jo ball joints at the hips, uh, single hinge knees. The feet are on ball joints so they can move side to side, front to back. That heel's articulated for support. Um, you can get some really cool poses out of him. He's based on the IDW. He's got the more spiky four-pointed crown. But you do have some options, and we'll show that off in a minute. Um, but he looks really well with uh, Void Legion. So there he is with their Scourge. They're doing a Cyclonus, but they're doing the Cyclonus, right? at least the one they're working on, is in that Samurai series with Lyo Convoy and Bludgeon, so it'll look a little different. It won't fit the same visual cues as this one. And here he is with the original City Commander, and they look like they could be good to square off against each other. And just for fun, here he is with the big City Commander, just because he was here and I wanted to show him all. Now, option parts, of course you get the hands, you get the also the instruction manual, that'll always be in there. Um, but you get you know, all the swappable hands that Iron Factory likes to do. So, these are his closed fists. I think these probably look the best for transformation, even though his arms are just kind of stuck on his sides anyway. But you've got some, some open palm hands. Again, he's backhanding somebody, or reaching for something, or patting a dog, whatever you want to do. He's got some open hold hands like but cl like closed off like full circle ha open hands and then uh fully open like the gripping hands but not not completely cut off there with the thumb and that's because he also comes with this cool axe and the axe separates into pieces so uh if you're using the closed hands you have to take it apart to slide the handles through and then you can plug them into their into this middle piece and if you just want to do them one-handed great and then you can take that hand pop it onto his body and now he's holding his axe if you want him to hold it at a slight angle you can use this hand but you know you've got two fists two open hands two closed hands and uh you two open palm hands yeah two open palms hand one for each side so you can mirror everything however you wish he's got the posability to uh to two hand this axe um if you really wanted to get another hand on there, you can also, if you don't want the whole long axe, you can uh, just use this much of it and give them a short hand axe. And you can you can put that bottom on or not. It's up to you. But if you just want to give them a small axe. Get these guys out of the way. He also comes with, actually, give him, let's give him a fist again, too. Um, like I said, he, the, the, the head that comes attached to him in the packaging was the four-pointed IDW head, but he does have a more standard, uh, the swoopy three-crested head, uh, more, more, more cartoon comic Galvatron, and you have to unscrew it to put it on, but you just, you just unscrew the back, pop it on the ball joint, and he's got a different head, which is a nice little accessory piece. Um, oh, and uh, where is he? Just for fun, I also got him out. 
Here he is with Leader Galvatron. I'm not sure as you get like this is more IDW Galvatron, this is more cartoon Galvatron, but his extra head does match more of that than that. He also comes with, um, again, here his shoulder is mounted on his forearm a la uh, Megatron style fusion cannon. But if you want it mounted up higher, like, uh, I'm pretty sure Galvatron's cannon was mounted up on his bicep. It does That doesn't work here, but there's an alternate pauldron that you can pop this one off. And there's a pauldron with a peg hole right here, so you can put this back on, uh, attach it to his arm. And then you can take and you can fold this into the cannon and then there's a peg right here up, up on the black part that you can peg that in up here if you would rather have it took me a while to figure i'm like why is there an extra pauldron is there some, is that for transformation um but no it, it's just so you can give him if you'd rather have him have the cannon attach above the bicep or above the elbow you can uh you can put that one on and have him fire like that so it's, it's personal preference of where you want that cannon mounted, and that's kind of cool that they give you that option. And it's super easy to swap out. But yeah, it's another fun little figure from Iron Factory. And again, his alt mode is the weak, obviously the weaker of the two modes, but his robot mode more than makes up for it. I think he's a, if you're going to display him on the shelf with some of your other figures, uh, having Galvatron, he, looks, he's, he, he fits well with, uh, if you have War for Cybertron, Unicron. Uh, he looks good down there. But, um, yeah, it's just a fun little Galvatron figure, and uh, happy to have him. I'm looking forward to some more stuff coming from Iron Factory later in the year, so we'll see how that turns out. That Power Glide looks great. Um, and, yeah, but there is Iron Factory's IFEX 47 Void Tyrant. And just for funsies here, again, once again, here he is. If you have a bunch of Scourges, you can uh, army build behind him. 